everything He did belongs to you. He got it all back. He didn't just get part of it back. He got every aspect of our, of our supernatural living. He got it back. The devil is a liar. He wants you to think you don't have it. You got to go to heaven to get it. It's right here, right now. That's right. Preach it. You know what? I grew up. We used to sing them old red back hymnal songs, and some of them were really powerful, and some of them weren't worth singing. <laughs> I'm foot sore and poorly shod. <laughs> Hogwash. Exactly. I'm just a pilgrim <laughs> and a stranger just traveling through this weary land. I'm not a pilgrim. I'm not a stranger. The earth is mine. That's right. I'm the rightful oh, heir to it. Yeah. Yeah. Strangers and pilgrims have no authority in either world. Yeah. Get over it. Yeah. <laughs> Woo. The devil, you're done. That's right. Mm -hmm. You're done, devil. Man in Christ is now immortal. But God is and always has been eternal. Eternal means God had no beginning and He will have no ending. That's eternal. Yes. Amen. You had a beginning. But in Christ you will have no ending. You are immortal. That came not through Adam but through Jesus Christ. The last. God communicates in a plethora of ways to us. God communicates in sounds, in colors, in tastes, in fragrances. I was in an altar praying some years ago in Down, Virginia. I was the only one in the church. I was pastor in that church. I went down to the altar. It was a weekday. I went down to the altar and I knelt in that altar and I was just praying. And while I was praying, asking God about some things, I didn't know then what I know now. But as I was praying, I sensed someone came into that sanctuary. I didn't hear them. I didn't see them. But all of a sudden, I knew that somebody was there. And I began to smell an indescribably beautiful fragrance. Something that I had never smelled before. And it was, it was so impactful that it just I, I couldn't imagine how beautiful that was smelling like that the thing had to be what what is it that, that smells that awesome and I just got still I, I didn't uh, I didn't say anything else. I just, I was bent over the altar and I was just quiet and still. That permeated that whole sanctuary. I was so, so reverent. And in a few minutes, it left. And my thought was, don't go, don't go. But it just left like it came. I got up and I looked around and I knew that I had been visited from the other world. I 
can't describe it. There's nothing. I've never. There's no fragrance like it. I've never smelled anything that even came close to it. It was otherworldly. And I finally came to the conclusion that it wasn't my nose that smelled it. It was my spiritual sense that smelled it. And it was my spirit that sensed the presence. For every physical sense you have, you have a spiritual sense counterpart. God can speak to you through fragrances. God can speak to you through colors. Colors in the Bible mean things. The Bible says a, a woman shall not wear that which pertaineth to a man. It's talking about colors. I'm not talking about the kinds of clothes. It's just talking about colors. There were men's colors and there were women's colors. The, 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 God speaks numbers are a language. God speaks in numbers. Numbers mean things. And God can, can show you things just in numbers. It's hard to comprehend, but it's otherworldly. It's, it's what we got disconnected from. Adam, Adam communicated with heaven. Heaven commun God would come down and walk with Adam in his garden. He didn't make Adam come up there. He came to Adam, and he'll do it today. He came in Christ. He came in the Holy Ghost. He's been coming here for centuries. Because he loves us. God speaks in dreams. God speaks in visions. God speaks in, through angels. God speaks through prophets. God speaks through tongues. And interpretation. God speaks through nature. God speaks through revelations. God speaks through inspiration. You can just be, you can just have an inspiration, a thought that comes to you. You don't know where it came from. You don't know how you got that thought. It, it's from there. It's from the other world. Inspire means to be God breathed. I breathed into Adam, inspired, he became alive. I believe that God wants to quicken our senses. God can make these words on this page come alive. He can do that. It's, he can quicken it. God can speak through a teacher or a preacher. God can speak through a prayer. Even your prayer. You can hear yourself pray and think, you didn't know to pray for. All of a sudden, the Spirit of God takes over and you're praying things. Paul said, I will pray with the understanding and I'll pray with the Spirit too. God has all kinds of ways to speak to us. It's language from the other side that you have to be able to receive that's the reason your flesh is always battling with you not to be spiritual, but to just take care of business at hand. The flesh, I got to do this, I got to do that, I got to do. Sometimes you need to find that altar and smell that fragrance. Did you know the scripture says, Be still and know that I am God? Yes. Doesn't mean to just be still. It means to let go. Just let go. Whatever it is, whatever it is, just let it go. Just let it go. Yes. Give him your attention. Let go and know that I am God. He wants to communicate. He will communicate. He is communicating. It's like Say, well, God's not talking to me no more than the radio's talking to me. Then you don't have that radio on. 
It's, of course it can't talk to you. It ain't on. <laughs> Your receiver's not on, and you wonder why God's not talking to you. It's not God that's not talking. It's you that's not tuned in. It's never God. It's always us. we got to grow up. Adam's senses and powers and knowledge and abilities were beyond anything that we know. He was something else. He was in the image of his father. There was no sin. There was no carnality. There was no distraction. That man, he New stuff. He he he. He communicated. His words caused the ground to grow. His words spoke to the natural world, and it cooperated. Look at Jesus and you get a you get a, 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 a taste of that. The water just held him up while he walked on. The storm just knew, hey, he's in charge. Yeah. Not me. That's right. That's right. The rooster crowed because he said it would. At the time he said it would. The donkey was tied up waiting on his disciples to come and get him. Fig tree. Saw him coming and said, Oh, I'm in trouble now. I should have some figs on me. <laughs> See, this earth knows we're not in charge. But it needs to come to understand that we really are. We just haven't waked up yet and smelled the coffee. Yeah, right. Smell the fruit. The reason Elijah could be on a mountain and, and he could just suddenly say, There is a, a sound of abundance of rain. Mm -hmm. Nobody else heard it. He heard it. What? Where'd it come from? It came from there. And when he believed it, and bent down and came into agreement with it, came into alignment with it. Then it came from there, not just in his hearing, but it came visible. And then it became rain. We need to learn how to access it and with our faith just pull it right into manifestation. Yes. Well, it's impossible. No, it's not. No, it's not. I was reading the other day a medical uh, periodical, and it was talking about Synesthesia. Synesthesia. Anybody ever heard that term? Synesthesia? You ever heard of that? Synesthesia. It's a, it's a, a, a syndrome or an oddity where the senses of a person become so hyper that they don't just see colors, they hear them. They don't, just, they don't just hear a sound, they taste it. They don't, they don't just, 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 just see a number, they smell it. The senses are, are out of kilter or something, they, they, they believe that it's something wrong, and people's senses 
get confused and, and they begin to, to sense something that the other sense is supposed to do. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? It's called synesthesia. It's not something that you hear much about. It doesn't happen very often. And, 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 it, and they're, they're not saying that it was what was a spiritual event. But what I'm saying is you have a spiritual counterpart for everything that you have in the natural. Since what? And, and more. I smelled a fragrance that was not in that sanctuary. I saw the shadow of a dove. I was driving a, a 1969 VW window van in Danville, Virginia in the early 80s. And I was driving that window van on a sunny day and I turned, and, and I happened to look out the window, and there was a perfect shadow of a dove moving right along on the pavement beside me. I thought, well, that, that bird's flying along with me. And so I got to the intersection. I made a turn. Didn't have to stop or anything. Just made a turn. And I got to looking, and it was going up the hill with me. tried to keep them running off the road. And there did see him, a dove. Followed me for blocks. I saw it. Where did it come from? Where did it go? It left me. It was God. Because I got this overwhelming sense I'll go with you. I can't explain. I still can't explain. I don't know. I don't know where that smell came from. don't know where that, 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 that dove came from. don't know. Don't care. I know it's God. I was up in the mountains praying. Went there by myself. Built a fire in an old log cabin there to spend the week in prayer. There was no electronics before cell phones, before uh, uh, iPads or televisions. I mean, it wasn't before television, but there wasn't one there. Just me and my Bible. I knelt down in front of the fireplace. I built a fire. It was cool. I built a fire. Yeah, I got that fire blazing. Felt like David while I was musing the fire burns. <laughs> I knelt down at an old comfortable leather type chair. Back then, I could get up and down real good. <laughs> I began to pray. And at some point, I don't know when, but at some point, I just went out in the spirit. I just lost sense of all reality, all. Uh, geography, all time. I just, I, I don't, uh, I don't know. all I know is in just a few minutes, at least it seemed like a few minutes, I, uh, I came to myself and I, and I stood up and thought, well, I, I'll come back and pray some more. And I turned around and that fire was completely gone out and the embers were even cold and it was dark outside. I don't know how many hours I was out. There are things beyond this world that we have not accessed. And I'm telling you, God says it's time for us begin to experience what belongs to us. Mm -hmm. We're living beneath our privilege, which means that we're also living beneath our responsibility. Mm -hmm. This world is going to hell in a handbasket, mm -hmm. and it needs some answers. It needs some people have connections beyond the government, beyond
beyond the banks, beyond the medical facilities, some connections. I got a little cross on my lapel today. That is three nails. Three nails. That's what held Jesus to the cross. Well, actually, it wasn't the nails. It was love to hell. He could have come down. He could have called angels. Jesus had such access. He could have called angels on the scene and they could have gotten him down off that cross. Mm -hmm. But he did. That's what makes it so good. He could have, but he didn't. Because he was buying and paying for what the Holy Spirit is telling us about today. Beyond just being saved and missing hell. It's enjoying the possibilities of the world to come. You don't think it's strange when an opera lady sings and a glass shatters, do you? Because she sort of understands it. But she didn't throw a rock. She didn't shoot a bullet. She just hit a note. And that note broke that glass. Frequency. How could that happen? Something God made. A vibration. A sound affected something tangible. Don't tell me words don't work. That's right. I know they do. You don't think it's strange when you see a man take out a little thing of a jig out of his pocket. And all of a sudden you hear a dog barking and come running. You don't think that's strange because you suddenly figure out, well, that's a dog whistle. But you didn't hear it. But because you didn't hear it didn't mean that it wasn't real. It's tough going on all the time. That's, that's real. We're not accessing it. Because we're not tuned. The Spirit of the Lord spoke to me. I stopped last Sunday speaking. Right in the middle of the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me and said, I am tuning my people. I am tuning my people. I just stopped and said, thank you, Lord. And then I told the people, I said, that was the Holy Spirit. He just spoke to me and said he's tuning his people. I don't know what that means to you. It's not my business. I'm just telling you what God said. He's tuning his people. How do animals know to seek for higher ground when a tsunami is coming? There's no evidence of it. It's a sense that they have. You're not headed for higher ground because you didn't hear nothing. You didn't sense nothing. You didn't, I mean, you don't, didn't know anything, but they sensed it. How do you think you're going to hear the trumpet? You, you think the trump of God is going to be audible for everybody here? No. Only those who are in tune will hear it. God's tuning his people. God does not do things like that without a purpose. There's a sound of abundance of rain. 1 Corinthians 2, 9 and 10. I have not seen, nor hath not heard, neither has it entered the heart of man the things God prepared for them that love him. It's not just the words that we speak. It's the intention of our heart when we say them. That's a part of the vibration. We haven't figured that out yet. You can't just go around spouting off, well, the word of God says, no, I'm healing. No, 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 no. If you believe it, it's not coming out of here. It's coming out of here. And it is a different vibration according to the intention of your heart when you say it. We've never learned that before, but I'm telling you today. It makes a difference. Did you know we have actually two hearts now? Got some medical people. You got two. You got you, you 
two chambers. I mean, you got an upper heart and a lower heart, basically. Two hearts. Did you you know what AFib is? Yes. Uh -huh. That's when your when when your your heart your Partial. chambers are not in agreement. And you're fibrillating. And they have these things they call defibrillators that actually what it is, it's a, a shock and it shocks you back in the rhythm. Shocking, shocking. Well, God's tuning his people. Because our heart and his heart need to be seen, reset. These are shocking times. Well, these are times when men's hearts are failing them for fear. But the hearts of believers are coming in to sync with God. The same sun that melts the wax hardens the clay. We're not all affected by what's going on the same way. The same heat that melts the butter boils the egg, hardens it. Things are happening. Where are you? You know that so it is against the law for soldiers to walk across a, a bridge? To, to, I say to march across a bridge. Did you know that? It's against the law for like a platoon of soldiers to march across a bridge. Because the synchronization of their marching creates vibrations and it can collapse that bridge. It has done it before. When they come to the bridge, they tell them, at ease, now let's walk across this bridge. And they're all walking a different step, and they're all, they walk across the bridge, but they're not marching. Why? Because when you get into the right vibration, it'll affect what's around you. That's just a fact, y'all. Your brain puts off waves. Quartz watches are vibrating. That's why they're so accurate in keeping time. Sound travels through air at 720 miles per hour. That's the reason if a, a jet plane goes faster than 720, you hear an explosion because he just broke the sound barrier and you see him before you hear it. But sound through rock travels 14,000 miles per hour through a rock. Go figure. Who made all that, God? Your emotions put off vibrations that affect those around you. You ever pick up a cat and feel him purring? Who made that? God. Even a lion. You have a heartbeat. You have a pulse. Why? Because God made you to move, to vibrate, to resonate. He wants us to resonate with His Word. Did you know that now it's commonplace for them to take sonic waves or sound waves that go through fluid and they'll put that thing against you and Burst your kidney stones so you can pass them. That's commonplace anymore. It's just a vibration, but they've learned how to use it. God made that. Did you know that vibrations at a certain level can kill bacteria? You know, they make things now you can buy and plug it in the electrical socket to keep the rats away, the mice away. Why? Because they can hear it vibrating, but you can't. Did you know that if you focus 
sound waves at oil floating on top of water that it will actually begin to fibrillate and mix that oil and that water will emulsify. You can't do it, but the vibrations can do it. We are on time, y'all. Yes. It's time to reconnect yes. with the other side. Amen. The world needs it. The church needs it. And God is bringing it to pass. I want to be part of it. Be still and know. We need to let go of some things and take hold of some other things. What was Peter walking on? He wasn't walking on water. He was walking on the Word. Come. The servant turns to Elijah and says, Alas, Master, how shall we do? We're surrounded by Syrian soldiers and chariots and horses. prophet said, open his eyes, Lord, that he may see. And all of a sudden he saw that the mountains were full of chariots and horses of fire. Did they just come? No, they've been there all along. He just didn't see this. We need to pray, oh God, open my eyes so I can see what's going on. We need to pray, oh God, open my ears so I can hear what you want me to hear. Instead of what the Fools are trying to tell me. Amen. Yes, Lord. I'm going to close with this. Science, physics, has come to the knowledge that the subatomic world is more vast than the visible world. There are color, there are more colors we can't see than we can see. There's more sounds above and beneath our hearing level than what we have that we can hear. God didn't make us that way. We're supposed to hold, we're supposed to hear it all, see it all, have authority over it all. They've come to the to the uh, knowledge that in the subatomic world even smaller than the atom, is a little microscopic. You have to have a powerful magnifying system to even see it. It's called a quirk. Q-U-I-R-K. Quirk. It is constantly moving. But here's the thing that is so astounding about it. When you observe it through the, through the magnification, when you observe it, although it's doing nothing, when you start observing it, it starts responding to you looking at it. And it can do amazing things. It can divide itself in half. It, it has ability to adapt to different environments. Just a little. You can't even see it. They're all around us. But we've just now begun to see it. Who made that? And there's way more than we found out way more. You've been reconnected. You've been reconnected to the source. How much advantage are we taking of this reconnection? There's more to know. There's more to see, more to feel, more to sense, more to experience. You won't be afraid of the things that make you afraid now when you know some things that you don't know. And uh, Holy Spirit, <coughs> thank you. Thank you for guiding us into truth today.
thank you for every person under the sound of my voice. I thank you for the possibilities that are in this room. There are earth-changing possibilities in this room. And Lord, we thank you that you have reconnected us to the source of life. And that there is so, so much that we have access to. I pray, Lord, that you will teach us and show us and keep moving us in alignment and in harmony with you, sir. Yes. Here we are, Lord. Tune us. Yes. Tune us up like an instrument. Put us in the wavelength that we need to be in to know and understand the depths of the riches of your glory. Help us, Lord. We are not worthy. We know that. But, Lord, in Christ Jesus, you have made us worthy. So we lay claim to everything that we are heir to. In yes, Jesus' name. Jesus Christ's name. Thank you, sir. We will not ever be the same again. Mm. We will not ever be the same again. Mm. Thank you, sir. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Okay, y'all. Please don't forget this offering basket.